Okay. So basically what you want to do is just uh, mix it up. Um, you're not kneading at this point, you're just blending the flour and the, and the water. And uh, don't be afraid of, to make a mess. Making sure that you get all of the flour wet. Um, and remember, you're not adding anything else at this point. Uh, you're not adding salt or, or anything. You've just got flour and water in here, and uh, this is going to sit for at least 20 minutes to half an hour. So this is now ready. That, that's it. Um, so uh, I'm going to leave that to stand now for at least 20 minutes. It's probably going to be more like an hour, what I usually do. And uh, when we come back, you'll notice that uh, it's going to be much smoother. It won't look so porridgey. And uh, it'll be ready for us to start kneading. Uh, okay, so the bread, the, um, the, <laughs> the flour and water has finished auto leasing. So I'm going to hold that up to the camera and hopefully not pour it out. And you can see what it looks like. Um, and now um, I'm going to add yeast. Uh, I'm going to add some flour. I'm going to make it thicker. And then uh, once I'm kneading it, then I'm going to add the salt. Um, the best tool for mixing is a thermometer. You just move it around really, really quickly and it mixes the yeast in pretty quickly and you can get a temperature as well just to make sure it's not dying. Alright, so that's going to sit over there. Um, so, what I'm actually going to do, I probably messed this, uh, confused the steps earlier when I was describing it. I'm going to add the flour first to the auto leaves and I'm going to kind of get the dough to roughly a little bit wetter than the consistency I want it and then I'm going to add the yeast to that and uh, at this point it gets pretty messy so why don't you put this over there for me? Thanks. So this is still pretty wet, and when you do an auto lease, it makes the dough extremely sticky, which is good for the final result, but a little bit more challenging to work with. And all right, so I'm going to add the yeast to this now, the liquid, and just kind of fold it in. dry now because it's got a lot of flour on it, but as I'm kneading it, it's going to get wet again, and I'm going to add a bit more flour, and uh, I'll dry it out, knead a bit more, it'll get wet again, and keep doing that until it gets to the consistency that I want it to be at. So now I'm going to switch to French kneading technique, which is a little bit violent, so here goes. Mix the yeast into the dough and 
get a healthy dough before you add the salt. Um, so what I do is I just kind of pour it over the top like this. Some of it falls onto the sides of the dough and uh, as I'm kneading the dough will pick that up. And so the dough's gotten stuck to the table now so just use the dough scraper to get that off and knead the salt in. And again I'm picking the salt up off the table as I'm kneading it. And uh, you'll notice a strange thing happening to the dough when you add the salt. It feels a little wetter all of a sudden on the outside. I'm not sure why that is. I guess the salt attracts moisture or something. And so now I'm folding air into it again. And I'm going to switch to banging the hell out of it. Gently. Um, 
my dice scraper. And uh, this time, I'm not going to do a Hemmelman fold. In other words, like that, and like that, like that, and like that. Um, I'm going to just fold it over like this. In one direction, and then the other direction. Alright, and then, uh, let's see. I need to just prep. Uh, this is a baker's peel. I'm going to use this to load the bread into the oven. And I rub flour in this wood every now and then just to make sure the dough doesn't stick. Alright, now I'm going to cut the dough in half and get the one out of the way. And this one. Shape it nice and round. And I'm going to take a rolling pin. And this rolling pin's got a little bit of flour on it. And just roll this flat. And it's really springy, so it doesn't flatten out like a unrisen dough would. It holds its shape really nicely. Alright, and then now I'm going to. bubbles over there that I'm popping. And so I've kind of sealed that seam and the stove's really sticky. So to get onto the baker's peel I have this little silly technique that I use. And I'm going to set that up over there. And here's what I do. Right, you can see it really wants to stick. So what I do is whoop, there. And that seam that I made, I'm going to make sure that's at the bottom and lay that over there. And then when you cut bread, risen bread, you'll, uh, baked bread, you'll see it, the cuts go like that. But to get that effect, you need to actually cut it fairly straight across. So, more like this. And that. Alright, so I'm ready to load these in. Uh, oven's preheated to 400. Uh, I'm going to go with the first one. Crap. Alright. And the next one. That's a little bit better. And when you don't load them perfectly, that was the worst load I've done for a long time. Around with the dough scraper. All right, that's done. And I think those are actually going to do just fine. And the kettle just finished boiling. You might want to put a, a dish, dry dishcloth over here to protect the glass, but uh, I think I've gotten good enough to not spill. So here goes. generate a ton of steam and give those breads a nice oven bounce. Number This uh, breaks apart really easily, um, and it has a really great, uh, a great smell and uh, an awesome flavor. Um, so that is a basic French bread. This is just, um, this is just flour, yeast, and salt and water.